Hello, please. Wolfie for the win again, here today to bring you another Mind Gamer episode. Hooray! This one's been a long time coming. It's actually the first episode I wanted to make, but I could just never get the right footage for it. Until now. May I present to you, without further delay, the king of the jungle, the urban terror. A beast so frightening that DICE made Operation Locker just to give those who fear it a safe place to hide. The Tankosaurus Rex. Ah, I love the main battle tank, often abbreviated as the MBT. It's hands down my favorite vehicle in the game. While it may not have the nimbleness of the LAV or the air domination potential of the mobile AA, there is nothing scarier in this game than looking down the barrel of an enemy tank, and in that moment knowing that you are well and truly fucked. However, it's my duty to point out that the ferociousness of the MBT is balanced out by several significant weaknesses that, if left unaccounted for, can lead to a very rapid extinction of the species. If you haven't watched my LAV video, I strongly encourage you to do so. Not only will this episode follow the same format, but many of the lessons covered in that video will apply here as well, and I won't be covering them in as much detail. Today we play on Dawnbreaker, and this is the score at the end of the round. As we watch the footage, I'll explain the thought processes behind each and every action that I take, as well as the mistakes that I make and ways I could have improved my play. As an added bonus, I was on a mumble server with my squadmates Straz, Freaky, and Vertical, and by including a recording of our chatter, I hope to show you how much more fun and effective it is to play with a well-coordinated squad. Let's start with the pre-battle setup. I run a somewhat unconventional tank loadout. I've been told that the pros have settled on the Sabo and Staff Shell combo for maximum anti-armor potential, and while I understand the fear of enemy armor that would drive a tank pilot to run such a loadout, I feel like such a playstyle is... less fun, and inflexible when dealing with other threats. In groups, infantry can be just as dangerous as enemy armor, if not more so. For that reason, I run a mixed arsenal, consisting of AP shells and the coaxial HMG. The rest of my tank loadout is identical to my LAV loadout. Reactive Armor, Active Protection, or AP for short, and Zoom Optics. If you want a more in-depth discussion of the reasoning that goes into choosing a tank loadout, feel free to check out the supplemental video linked below. Now without any further ado, let's jump into the action. As always, make sure you spawn as Engineer, preferably with the Mechanic perk. The Repair tool is an absolute must for bringing your tank back up to fighting condition between engagements, and the Launcher can provide some critical extra damage in between volleys from your main gun. I personally prefer the RPG for damage, or the SRAW for utility. As soon as the game starts, I mark the point I want my squad to attack. As a squad leader, you should always have an objective marked. It's free points, it helps level up your squad towards field upgrades, and it helps coordinate attacks without having to use text or voice chat. I also run over all the street lamps, because they're like metal trees that have a tendency to block your tank shells. Now as I said in the LAV episode, you'll want to secure points on your side of the map before pushing on ahead. You do not want to be backcapped, because you never want the enemy to have access to your rear flank. One of the MBT's greatest weaknesses is how devastating it is to be shot from behind. A single rocket or tank shell to the rear armor not only deals upwards of 50 damage, it's also guaranteed to mobilize your vehicle, and once that happens, it's only a matter of time before a second hit finishes you off. In this game, it looks like the enemy jet rushes to drop bombs on my team's armor column as we leave our base. This is a pretty common tactic amongst jet pilots, so don't be afraid to pop active protection when you hear the incoming missile tone. It should be back up again long before you get into another situation where you'll need it. I didn't do that here, and though I get lucky in that only one bomb hits me, I still take 30 points of unnecessary damage. As I help capture D, I notice something weird is going on. Can you spot it? I'll give you a second. Alright, time's up. Did you notice the grayed out ATV icon on the minimap behind D? That seems out of place, doesn't it? Point D is still a neutral point, so no vehicles should have spawned here yet. And I don't see any teammates nearby that could have rode the ATV down here and abandoned it. The only logical conclusion is that the enemy drove it over here to try and cap D first. The fact that having two of us on the point here is enough to cap it suggests that it's only one enemy. If we rewind a bit, you can actually see that my capture progress bar stalls for a moment when I'm capping the point alone. Had I been paying closer attention, that in itself should have tipped me off to the enemy's presence nearby. 
Either way, now that I know that someone's hiding around here somewhere, I decide to loop around and see if I can find him. I spot the ATV, but the guy is nowhere to be found. As I continue around the corner, I almost run into three landmines buried in the road, undoubtedly left there by my hidden adversary. It's clever, but not clever enough. Because I've figured out what's going on by this point, I'm on my guard, and I notice the trap before it kills me. One well-placed tank shell is sufficient to blow them all up. Anti-tank mines and slams are very deadly, and very hard to spot. Driving over even one of them usually leads to a heavily damaged and immobilized vehicle. Engineers tend to lay them in threes, which all but guarantees instant death if you're not paying attention. Here are some general tips when dealing with mines. First, be aware of common mine locations. You might think that the best way to avoid them is to stick to flat roads where their dirt piles marking the enemy mine locations are easily spotted, but as it turns out, these well-paved, commonly traveled paths are actually going to be the most heavily mined. Think like an engineer. Where would you put your mines so that the enemy tanks are most likely to run over them? On the roads, of course and also at the entrances to buildings and bases. Now, I'm not suggesting you bumble through bumpy terrain and dense forests just to bypass mined roads. What you should do, though, is spot the ground whenever you can. Mines can be spotted, and they show up as these icons on the HUD and minimap. Once you know where the mines are, it's easy to avoid them or blow them up with explosives of your own. Out of sight, out of mind. Get it? It's a pun. It's mind. Forget it. Finally, if you're really having trouble with mines, or if you're on a map where they're very hard to see, and I'm looking at you, Zavod311, consider swapping out zoom optics for IRNV optics, which highlight planted explosives in a hard-to-miss bright green color. I'm about to go back towards D to continue hunting down my opponent when I see an enemy LEV retreating around the corner up ahead. LEVs are a juicy target for tanks, especially at longer ranges when your main cannon greatly outclasses their weaponry in speed and damage. If you nail them in the wheels with your first shot, you can usually kill them before they recover from the mobility hit. It typically takes 3 AP shells to take down an LEV. I try to arc a shell over the concrete blocks, but I aim too low. I use this first shot to calibrate my next one, which hits dead center and finishes off the weakened vehicle. Let's talk about shot arcing and leading for a bit. These are definitely skills you're going to have to learn if you want to get good at tanking. Don't worry though, they'll come naturally with time and practice. Sure, you can calculate the drop using the built-in rangefinder and estimate velocity vectors to guide your aim, but you'll rarely have the time to make those calculations in the middle of a battle. More often than not, it really boils down to a gut feeling, and the best advice I can give you is this. Don't hold back on a shot just because you don't think you can hit. Take the shot. If you hit, awesome. If you don't, you've just gained a bit of experience that'll help you aim better in the future. Once you get really good at intuiting the arc of your shells, you can pull off some ridiculous shots and even start to hit targets that are obscured behind cover. This is part of the reason why I like the AP shell. It's fast enough to reliably hit targets at range, but has just enough arc that you can do some fancy tricks with it. That's also why I prefer a zoom optics. They allow you to fine tune your aim for really precise shots. Having taken care of the LEV, I noticed that D is being uncapped. Yeah. The enemy sneak has finally decided to reveal himself. Rocket. Despite his solid play up until now, he's gotten himself into quite a pickle, and now is surrounded on all sides. I'm perfectly happy to put a few bullets into him and let my teammates finish him off. My buddy tells me there's a tank by E, and I immediately head in that direction to punish it for overextending. Enemy armor is still your biggest threat, so if you ever catch an opponent's tank or LV in a vulnerable position, you should always capitalize on the opportunity to take it out. By the time I get there, though, my teammates have already done just that. I'd like to point out that what this tank did was pretty much a perfect lesson in what not to do as a tanker. Not only did he push far, far into enemy territory with little to no infantry support, he attacked into a point which is almost exclusively tall buildings. That's practically begging to have rockets and C4 rain down on you from above while you can't aim high enough to return fire. I'd spot a straggler making a break for it, and I hit him with my standard anti-infantry combo, an AP shell in his general direction, followed by a spray of HMG fire. 
Any infantry that isn't outright killed by the AP shot is usually weak enough that a single HMG bullet finishes them off. The best part about this combo is that changing weapons doesn't interrupt the reloading of the AP shell, so you can keep using the HMG until your main gun is ready to fire again. I noticed another infantry on the minimap, this time behind me and to my left. I back up and look in that direction, but I see nothing. They must be parachuting from above, and now the question is, where will they land? I have two main rules when dealing with parachuting infantry. Never be directly underneath one, unless you want some C4 pooped on you, and always try to track them from a safe distance so that you can blast them as soon as they land. The easiest way to do this is to watch their icon on your minimap. Whoa, he just fell through the stairs. I blow up one guy as soon as he touches down, while the other infantry scrambles for cover inside the building. I know I won't be able to flush him out, so I leave him to my teammates to deal with as I burst through the fence and head towards D, which is being captured by the enemy. A random chopper falls out of the sky, shortly followed by what I assume to be its ex-pilot. By mashing Q at the dust cloud, I actually managed to spot and kill the poor fella, despite having no visual on him whatsoever. I target D to let my squad know what's up, and then I take out the AA that's shooting at me. Anti-air vehicles are even less of a threat to tanks than they are to LAVs, but as I'm fighting, I make sure to alternatingly drive forwards and backwards, so that anybody trying to see for me from behind while I'm distracted gets tread marks on their face for their trouble. After that battle, I push a bit too far into D, and I get hit by an RPG before I can turn on my active protection. I kill my attacker with a lucky headshot from the HMG, and I do a ton of damage to his teammate with another AP shell before backing up out of there. All this time, the LEV next to me has remained empty, but I realize that sooner or later, someone's going to spawn in it and turn on me. I tell my gunner, Freaky, can you take that LEV, please? But it gets taken as soon as the words leave my mouth. Now, how can I tell? If you compare the before and after, you can see that not only has the grey, empty vehicle icon disappeared from the HUD, the lights have turned on, and additional attachments have spawned on the LAV. I expected this to happen though, and I'm prepared to deal with it. As soon as I realize the LAV is now hostile, I put an AP shell in its back, shoot an RPG as my main gun reloads, and finish the vehicle off with another AP shell. The driver doesn't even have time to react before he's blown up along with his vehicle. This combination of shell, rocket, shell is very powerful, but it can be tricky to use. There's the very real possibility of getting killed, leaving behind a free tank for your enemy, but there's a few things you can do to mitigate that risk. First, only get it out if your opponent is not aiming at you, or if he's shot his main gun and is reloading. Second, try to have your weapon already out when you enter the tank. That way, you don't have to waste a few fractions of a second switching to it, like I do here. Just be sure to swap back to your repair tool first if you get out to fix your vehicle, or else you'll feel really dumb when you shoot a point-blank rocket at your own tank. Not that oh, I'm dang. speaking from experience or anything. Good. The infantry on the road by D. I get hit by another rocket as I try to cap D, and I see the enemy engineer run into the building. Now, I don't want to get hit again, but I kind of get stuck on some terrain. I keep shooting in the enemy's general direction, not out of any real effort to kill him, but to discourage him from shooting another rocket at me as I get my tank unstuck. It works, and his next rocket flies harmlessly past. Unfortunately, I decide to go full dirt, and my brain goes, oh, there's a rocket, rockets are, uh, rockets are bad, in engage countermeasures, and I waste my active protection for nothing. As I back out, I notice the LAV has respawned. Again, I tell my buddy to grab it, uh, Freaky, could you grab the LAV? And this time he gets it. This turns out to be the best decision I make for the entire round, for reasons that will become apparent soon. Now, a lot of things happened in the next 30 seconds, and so we're going to watch the next segment three times. Once to cover what's going on in my head as it's happening, a second time to appreciate how all my decisions up until that point make the difference between life and death, and one third final time, without commentary or pauses, just to see how things go down in real time. As we finish capping up D, Freaky says, and I spot an enemy tank on the minimap. It's around the corner and behind me, which is exactly what I do not want. Now I have two options. I could drive forward and try to execute a turn to face my enemy head on. However, this would constitute me turning my back to face the rest of the enemy team, which is not a good idea. Instead, I decide to go up past the enemy tank so that if he were to shoot me, he'd only hit my side or front armor. As I reverse, I also turn my tank so that it's angled 45 degrees towards him. I do this because when you're getting shot at by an enemy tank, the angle of impact of their shells on your armor determines how much damage you take. Other people have already made videos explaining this, but, in summary, if a shell hits your armor straight on, it does up to 50% more damage than if it hits you at an angle. By turning so that all of my tank's surfaces are at an angle to my opponent, I make it so that his first shot only deals 24 damage instead of a possible 30 plus, 
Now this might not seem like a huge difference, but if you think about it, being dealt 24 damage per hit instead of even 25 is the difference between dying in 5 shots versus dying in 4. It's a pretty big deal. In Battlefield, even the smallest details can make a huge difference. As I keep fighting the tank, I keep moving as well. Nothing fancy, just forwards and backwards, so that I'm not standing still like he is. At this point, he's probably panicking because he's taking fire from both the tank and an LEV, and my simple evasive maneuvers are enough to make him miss his second shot. At the same time, my opponent's gunner has realized his predicament and bails out. I just shot at the tank, so I figured I'll shoot at this guy with my HMG as I listen for the sound cue that tells me my main gun is done reloading. I don't actually hit any of my shots, but I figured I'd let you know that this is something you can do. By the way, the sound cue I'm listening for is this one. Once that sound finishes playing, you can swap back to your main gun and shoot it again, like I do here. One bailed, one bailed. He's dead. We're not out of the woods yet, though. As soon as we kill this tank, another one appears just down the road, and he is very likely to have noticed our little battle here. I peek down the concrete barrier to sneak a shot at him, but he's ready for me and we trade hits, bringing me down to 26 HP. At this point, his next shot could kill me, so I have to do something fast. My options are either run away or hide behind cover. Running away would be best, but I don't think I can get anywhere safe before his next shot hits me, and my active protection is still on cooldown from that mistake earlier. My only choice is to duck behind this little concrete barrier. This is only a temporary solution though. Once my enemy repositions to be able to shoot around my cover, my tank will still die. So as soon as I break line of sight, I hop out to repair. Like all special tactics, in-combat repair can save your butt. But it can also get you killed. Here's a little factoid that I only realized when editing this video together. When you exit a tank or LEV, you'll always exit on the side that your turret is facing. Look to the left, and you'll get out on the left. Look to the right, and you'll get out on the right. Look forwards but slightly towards one direction, and you'll exit in that direction. This works out wonderfully when hopping out to shoot off a quick RPG. As long as you're aiming at the enemy beforehand, you'll never have to shoot past your own vehicle. You'll always have a direct line of sight to your target. However, for the same reason, this works against you when you want to do some in-combat repair, because you'll always get out on the side exposed to enemy fire. This is why I always recommend getting to cover before hopping out to fix your tank. Alternatively, you could look away when you get out to repair, but then that means when you get back in, you have to turn back to face the enemy. As I repair, I circle around so that I can use my vehicle to shield myself from incoming fire. I do this just in time to avoid a rocket that hits my tank and brings it down to just 5 HP. Holy crap. 5 HP? In the last 30 seconds, if I had not done all those small things to absolutely minimize how much damage I took, I would have died right there. If I had not told Freaky to get into the LAV and help me fight off all these opponents, uh, Freaky, could you grab the LAV? Probably would have died. If I had not been marking points and building up towards a filled up mechanic perk field upgrade, Freaky's LAV would not have started to heal me when he got into it and I would have died. If I had not angled myself to take less damage from the first tank's shell, dead. If I had not gotten out to repair, horrible, flaming death. But I did all those things, and so I'm alive. And that's always cool. That's not to say I played perfectly though. If I hadn't wasted my active protection or traded hits with the second tank, I would be in better shape. As it is, although I survived up until this point, there's still a few things left to deal with, namely a rocket-toting engineer and an enemy tank on the other side of this wall. Now, how do I know that I was hit by a rocket and not a tank shell? Well, it turns out that these two things make different sounds when they hit. A rocket usually makes a whoosh thud sound, like this. Whereas a tank shell is closer to a whistling clang, like this. The more you know. So the last hit took a quarter off the repair circle, or about 25 health. I know I can't out-repair the damage that I'm receiving, so I continue repping until I think I might be able to withstand another hit, and then I hop in my tank to try to deal with the infantry threat first. As soon as I get in, I hit active protection to buy myself a couple more seconds of life, and then I look to see where the engineer is. And luckily for me, he reveals himself by firing off another rocket. Freaky takes him out before I can react, and so I use the remaining two seconds of invulnerability looking to trade shots with the enemy tank. But uh, he's nowhere to be found. I ask Vertical where the tank went, and he helpfully says, Tank bailed, I'm gonna try and steal it. Pretty satisfied with my luck, I get out to finish up my repairs, keeping an eye on the enemy scout chopper flying overhead in case he tries any shenanigans. Man, that was intense. You wanna see it at full speed? There's another one. Sniper.
now they're everywhere. One bailed, one bailed. He's dead. Nice. See that guy dropping it on me? I got the guy shooting you. Tank bailed. I'm gonna try and steal it. While repping, I also see an AC-130 flying up ahead. I'm not sure whose team it's on. We only recently capped C, which is the point that gives our commander the ability to launch gunships, so it could be ours or the enemy's. I can't risk being out in the open if it's the latter case, so I hop back in and drive behind the building at D before finishing up my repairs. I also take the time to make room in my squad for vertical. Looking at the scoreboard, we own every point but A, so I decide to go there where the fighting is. What I really should have done in this case is hang back and cover the rear points. In situations like this where your team momentarily controls more than three points, you're especially vulnerable to being back capped since all your team is concentrated on the front, pushing that last remaining capture point instead of defending the back flag. I look towards A and notice a guy in the distance. I could have nailed him with a tank shot, but why waste precious ammo when the HMG is one of the most accurate sniping weapons in the game? Of course, I then go to whiff almost all my shots and fail to net the kill. However, I wasn't kidding about the HMG. The first three to four shots are always dead on, and guaranteed to kill if you hit with all of them. It's only after sustained fire that the HMG's accuracy becomes unmanageable. The best way to deal with this, of course, is to fire the HMG in bursts, but I can totally understand how sometimes you can get really excited and flub an otherwise easy kill. I spot an enemy tank in the distance, and I figure it's worth it to try to hit him right now, so that when I eventually do have to fight him, I'm at an advantage. I miss, which ends up hurting me a bit by alerting him to my presence. I duck back around the corner and regroup with my squad as we all start pushing into A together as an armor column. Hey, can I hop in your thing? One of you? Yeah. There you go. I'm in three keys. I do my part by marking the point, and as I drive up, I keep my eyes on the road for mines. Mines on the road. I spot some further up, but my vision is obscured by a stupid fallen tree. Even in death, these leafy green demons continue to torment me. Will I ever be free from their wrath? Actually, yeah, on Silk Road. I try to blow up the mines with a tank shell, but I miss because I can't see to accurately judge how far away they are. At the same time, an enemy tank icon shows up on my screen and I can't see where he's aiming, so I turn on my active protection just in case he's about to shoot me. Which he isn't. Again, if you're watching this video, tree, I just want to let you know how much I hate you. Not wanting to waste my active protection, I decide to be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. I hit my opponent with one shot through the fallen tree, and drive forward to line up a second shot. The green light around my opponent, though, tells me that he has active protection on, and so I should wait for it to run out before shooting again. I don't wait long enough though, and his AP stays up just long enough to negate my follow-up. My opponent then hits me with the sabot shell, then a staff shell immediately followed by a second sabot, taking me down from 100 to 29 HP in 3 seconds. Damn, that's scary. I can see why so many people prefer that combo. I quickly back up as my gunner gets out to fix me up. Thanks buddy. Now it's the enemy tank's turn to make mistakes. He chases after me because he thinks he has me dead to rights. And he would be right, if I didn't have another tank, an LV, and half a dozen engineers covering my back. He only manages to get a single shot off at me, which Freaky heroically takes in my place, before being blown to bits. Always be careful about being too greedy. Your life is worth much more than one enemy ticket. Don't chase after a kill if it puts you in a dangerous position, no matter how much you want it. Chopper over the water, attack chopper. I spot an enemy attack chopper flying overhead and I go for glory with an AP shell that, sadly, just barely misses. I probably should have stayed focused on the enemies in front of me, but sometimes you just gotta do what's fun instead of what's smart. Turning back towards A, the dumb tree refuses to go away, and so I decide to head down along the right side instead of charging blindly forward. A quick third person check lets me spot an ATV coming this way, as well as an infantry that's running around the corner. I give the ATV a friendly wave as it drives past me. To get at the other guy I spotted, I drive down to the lower part of A, if I had stayed on the higher road, all he would have to do to avoid my fire is stand at the bottom of the stairs, because the tanks just can't aim that low. The low ground is the better option here, because tanks can aim upwards a lot more than they can aim downwards. Being down here also lets me catch a glimpse of my enemy's feetsies behind the bus. 
to the right. I drive forward to flush him out, but he's slightly more clever than I expected. I thought he'd be hiding right up against the bus, since that's what most people would do. But he's actually standing a few feet back, so that if we blew the vehicle up, he wouldn't be hurt by the explosion. Smart move, guy. I miss my first shot, but unfortunately for him, he's got nowhere else to run, and so I atomize him as he makes a break for cover inside the building. Pushing up into A has, as I should have predicted, allowed the enemy to start capping D and C, and that is absolutely unacceptable! I back up a bit, so that I can help repel the attackers if needed, and I see another tank roll out from the US spawn. This is kind of a dangerous situation here. If the enemy caps C, I'll be stuck between a rock and a hard place. I hit the enemy tank with one shell, just to discourage further pursuit, and then I start backing up past C. I bump up against some concrete blocks that don't show up on the minimap, but through sheer force of will I slide my tank a couple of inches to the right to avoid the incoming shell. Just as I hit the tank again, I eat a rocket, which the helpful red arrow on my HUD tells me came from my left. Looking in that direction, I spot an enemy engineer making a break for it. In my haste, I miss my first shot, and only tag him with an HMG bullet before he makes it to cover. If I had just waited a little bit longer to line up a shot, I probably could have gotten him. As it stands though, the kill assist message tells me that someone else finished him off for me. I see another teammate under attack on the minimap, and I try to quickly send a shell in that direction. I miss so bad that the ensuing dust cloud ends up making me miss all my HMG shots as well. When the dust clears though, my teammate is still alive, so I like to think I gave him some valuable moral support. I tag the enemy's tank a third time with a shell, but I run out of ammo. Since he hasn't tried to run away yet, and his vehicle doesn't look like it's smoking or on fire, I doubt that he's low enough for my one remaining shell to kill him, so I decide to save it as I go to secure C. A high up vantage point like C is great for having vision over most of the map, but you should always remember that if you can see them, they can also see you. I stay up there long enough to pick off two guys. I'm pretty proud of using the splash from my AP shell to get the second one since I couldn't actually aim any lower. Then I peace out and look to support my teammates that are attacking B. I don't particularly like trying to capture B in a tank, because many of the enemy spawns are inside the building or up on this elevated walkway. When you're down there where the other tank is, the high walls on either side make it really hard to see anyone until they're almost on top of you. Knowing this, I choose to hang back and sit on the higher ground from which I can cover my teammate. I spot an enemy infantry rushing towards us to try to stop the cap, but I blow away the guard tower blocking my line of sight, and then I spray at the guy to drive him off. Don't forget that you can use the tank shell for things other than dealing damage, such as destroying cover to expose the enemy. I notice a second infantry to my left. This guy looks more dangerous. He's staring directly at me and not moving, which can only mean he's an engineer getting ready to fire a rocket. I prioritize the greater threat to myself and nail the second guy with an AP shell, but not before he lets loose his rocket. I activate my active protection, but the sudden upwards curve of the rocket tells me that I wasted my countermeasures trying to stop a law rocket, which cannot be stopped by AP. It seems like the first guy got away, but that's fine. I scared him off for long enough that we were able to capture B, and now the guy is injured and alone in the middle of an enemy capture point. I've accomplished what I came to do, so I back up and think about where to go next. I'm gonna push this guy. Seems like A is all that's left again, so I set out to cross the bridge and join up with my squad mates. Along the way, I see an enemy on my minimap just around the corner of this building, so I shoot a shell there to see if I can hit him with a splash. No dice. Vertical calls out another tank at A. Tank, it looks like. Which then shows up on my screen. It shouldn't be too much of a problem since we have two tanks and an LEV here, but I make a note of it in my mind. I see an infantry sprint across the clearing, and though I could have shot at him with my AP shell, I decide to use the HMG instead, just in case I need to save up my ammo for that tank. I notice that the enemy tank is just around the corner, so I peek out and tag him with a quick shell. I don't get a hit marker, and I can see that he's blocked the damage using active protection. Rockets and shells stopped by AP tend to make bigger, brighter explosions than those hitting their target. This is because AP causes explosives to detonate in midair, where all the energy goes into making a giant fireball instead of dealing damage. But for some reason, the enemy doesn't retreat like he should after using his countermeasures. So Vertical and I tear him apart. Thanks, Thanks. There's an infantry on my minimap hiding behind that concrete barrier over there, but I won't be able to get to him unless I drive a bit forward towards A. At the same time, I don't want to be greedy. I don't want to push in that far when half their team is going to be trying to defend the point. I try to drive backwards and to the side to get a better angle, but in doing so I also expose my back to the enemy. 
This is a big no no, and I'm lucky I didn't get disabled here. As I turn myself around, an enemy attack chopper blows up my buddies while managing to stay just high enough to avoid my retaliation. As I keep my sights on the attack chopper to make sure it's not coming after me, I get hit by a log coming from the general direction of A. Now I'm out in the open and I'm worried that I might get disabled before I can get to safety, so I pop active protection and drive as fast as I can back to D. At the same time, I let my buddy Straz know that I'll be needing repairs once we get out of the enemy's line of sight. The minimap tells me that the enemy's attack chopper is coming back, yeah. so after rounding the corner, I look to make a play. He dips just a bit too low this time, and I thank him for killing my squad mates by sending a tank shell tearing through his fuselage. Phew, it's been 30 minutes, and we're only about halfway through the round. We're running a bit low on time though, so I think this is a good place to end part one. Take a break, grab a snack, make some tea. And when you're ready for more, click the link here or in the description to hop on over to part two.